snap that long losing streak here at Rogers Center. Take a look at the lineup for Showalter, Hardy, Marquez, and Jones. Top three in the order. The veteran Bonnie Guerrero is the DH. Luke Scott's back in left field this afternoon. Derek Lee, Mark Reynolds. Ryan Adams gets a start at second base. Just his sixth start of the season at second. And Greg Tatum is behind the plate. And they were set to face young Zach Stewart. Stewart is making his major league debut here. We're going to bring you the scouting report. It's brought to you by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners. And we went to his manager, Luis Rivera, from a year ago to get a scouting report. Yes, well, he pitched for me last year. He did a great job for us uh, at the beginning of the season. He struggled a little bit with the slider, but then he found it. And uh, he was a fastball slider changeup. He used all, any, any pitches any time. Uh, he did a great job, keep the ball down. He got a two-seamer fastball, which is running into the right-handed hitters. Uh, keep the ball down. He uh, basically going to pass. Uh, he's quick on the mound. But what I mean by that is just, just grab the ball and pitch. He just don't walk around the mound. He just pitch. Zach Stewart. His scouting report comes from his manager a year ago, Luis Rivera, who was the manager at Double A. Zach Stewart coming up from Double A to make his major league debut. I like what he was saying about he works quickly that he doesn't stand around on that mound and look around. This is the spot where Kyle Drabeck was pitching but after he was sent down he was called up makes his big league debut. One of the reasons he was picked to be called up is he's been pitching well. There's a fly ball to center. Zach Stewart has his first out from the big leagues. You see what he's done in 12 starts. He threw 69 and two thirds. He gave up a few more hits than innings pitched. Good control. He didn't walk many. And he's going to try to pitch to contact. That's his entire makeup. Yeah, get out early in the count. Don't give him a lot of information. Work quickly. His last three games, we talked to you about that he has been pitching very well. 1 0 with a 237 run average in those last three starts. One of those starts was against the Orioles. Buoy, double A Orioles, and you can bet there's a phone call or two down to double A to say, hey, tell me what you know about Zach Stewart. Breaking ball just off the outside corner. Nick Markakis has been struggling over his last 16 games, hitting just 227. Went right back to the breaking ball, and you love the tempo with which Stewart has started this game. Yeah, no messing around. Stay on that rubber. It's a lot like Ricky Romero last night. Ricky had his game face on and came in and just pumping strikes. First major league strikeout. Nick Marquez is in the book. Bruce Walt was telling us that Zach Stewart is a power pitcher with a sinker slider. Watch this ball go down. Right underneath the bat. It's tipped by Marquez but held on by Jose Molina. They take the ball, they throw it out, and they will go ahead and put that one in the trophy case. Ricky Romero is the one that called the attention to get that ball back. He said, hey, that's a milestone strikeout, his first big league strikeout. Let's get to baseball. Two outs. Nick Marquez is a pretty good guy to put in your book as your first big league strikeout. Adam Jones looks at a high fastball. They have held Adam Jones down. One of their better hitters. 0 for 8 in this series. He leads this team in multiple hits. Games with 21. And there's what he has done in this series. That RBI was just a sacrifice fly. His first time up here. On Tuesday night. Ball on the strike. Boy, there's that good sinking fastball. Jones hits it right off the top of his foot. Fifth ranked prospect by Baseball America in the organization, and that's a pretty good spot given all the talent that all of a sudden has developed in the Blue Jays system. Pitching talent, you've got some everyday players that we have been talking about the first three months of this season. Strike three call. What a good start for Zach Stewart. A one, two, three first inning, including his first two major league strikeouts. Ricky Romero's got the ball from the first one.
Orioles in this series. 24 hits in the first two games as they won the first two. Took them extra innings in the opener, but they won 4 1 behind Ricky Romero last night. Escobar Patterson Bautista, the top three in the order, then the red hot Adam Lynn, and he has absolutely worn out the Orioles this year. Aaron Hill starting to swing the bat a little bit better. He had a home run here in this series. Edwin and Carnes shown his hit very well against. Jeremy Guthrie in his career. Jose Molina handles Zach Stewart, Rajay Davis, and Jason Nix at third base. First pitch from Guthrie is down and in for a ball. Escobar has been the guy who has set the tone so far in this series for the Blue Jay batter. He got him off to a good start yesterday with a home run. He has raised his batting average 15 points over the last two days. That's hard to do this time of the year. Generally, your batting average goes up about three points for every hit. You can see how he has done against the Orioles, hitting nearly 400. Good fastball from Guthrie. Jeremy Guthrie is the number one pitcher for the Orioles. This is his 16th, 17th career start against the Blue Jays. Just two and seven for his career. And over the course of those 16 starts, he, his team has gone just four and 12. We look at the one loss record that he has had, but a very good earn run average of three seven. Bouncing ball, J.J. Hardy got a chest high hop first out of the inning. Jeremy Guthrie beat Washington on May the 21st, but first, but hasn't won since in four starts. One of those losses was to the Blue Jays two starts ago. Six earned runs, five innings pitch. Escobar and Ling combined to go five for nine, three home runs, six RBIs. The scouting report for Jeremy Guthrie, lots of fastballs. He will challenge you with fastballs. He's got late break to his curveball and changeup, and the whole key for him is to keep it in the yard. Four home runs allowed already this year in 13 starts. He's a fly ball pitcher, an exaggerated fly ball pitcher. There's a lot of four seam fastballs, and that'll lead to those fly balls. Corey Patterson was a teammate of Guthrie's. Corey spent two different stints in Baltimore with the Orioles. Drills this one into right. Marquez has to back up and play another hop. Playing behind Jeremy Guthrie this afternoon for the Baltimore Orioles. Luke Scott back in left field with the right-hander on the mound. Adam Jones, Nick Marcakis between them. They have 13 outfield assists. Ryan Adams, his sixth start at second base and getting the catching call this afternoon. When his fifth start behind there, Craig Tatum will form the battery with Jeremy Guthrie. Tough to get a lot of starts when your regular catcher is a switch hitter and a good one in Matt Weavers. One out, Jose Bautista. Breaking ball down and away. No matter how hot Adam Lind is, Bautista continues to get a steady diet of off-speed pitches. This will be interesting to see now. Guthrie throws a lot of fastballs. He challenges the right-handers and tries to paint the outside corner. Adam Lind's hit 364 against Guthrie, including a home run. Bautista got jammed with that inside fastball. Challenged, challenged him there. Long ball blues. We talked about the home runs that Guthrie has given up this year. Since 2007, only James Shields of the Tampa Bay Rays have given up more. Now he throws a lot of fastballs. He throws a lot of strikes, and he will challenge you to put the ball in play. And has led to 119 home runs. Another breaking ball off the plate. He's got the sixth highest total in the American League in fly balls. 185 fly balls, and some of those are going to end up going out of the ballpark. And he pitches in a very hitter friendly ballpark. His home ballpark, Oriole Park at Camden Yards, is very cozy. Two and one. Jose Bautista's talked about it himself about his swing getting a little bit long, and he's just going through one of those stretches right now. Hit just one home run in the month of June combination of things it just the percentages will catch up to a hitter he was so hot the first two months of the season it was hard to continue and that last pitch was a pitch that he used to grill out of here there goes Patterson swung on and missed the throw to second not in time Bautista strikes out but Patterson steals second 
Stolen base number 10 on the season for Corey Patterson. A good time to run. Two strikes and a breaking ball that you were probably going to get to Bautista. Jeremy Guthrie has only given up now two stolen bases all season long. You see how quick he is to the plate. Patterson stole that one off the pitch. Tenth steal of the season for the Blue Jays left fielder. Now Adam Lynn. He is eight for his last 11 against the Orioles. And they're not little chinkers or broken bat singles either. Lots of production. Four of those eight hits have left the ballpark. Off speed pitch. Guthrie's ahead 0 and 2. Quite a run against the Orioles this season. Eight for 14, double four home runs and seven RBI. I think it might be time to go back to the drawing board and come up with a different approach. Maybe throw more off speed pitches. That last one really had the timing messed up. Strike three call that come back two seam fastball does it. Guthrie gets the strikeout. He strikes out Bautista and Lynn to end the first inning. A lot of late. Center. It's a great afternoon for baseball, and the Ontario Fire Services is put on a promotion, creating safety tips on baseball cards. And a lot of kids in attendance today. Vladimir Guerrero takes the first pitch inside from Zach Stewart. Stewart had a good first inning. Zach Stewart's 24 years old. He was part of the Scott Rowland trade in 2009. Late July, he came over from Cincinnati along with Incarnacion and Josh Berenike. That was a pop -up. behind first, Lynn battling the sun. he got the glasses on, makes the catch. All right, you see Adam Lynn. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense for the Blue Jays in the outfield. Patterson, Davis, and Bautista. Jose Bautista leads the club in outfield assists. Jason Nix, Escobar Hill, Lynn back at first base. Jose Molina doing the catch in this afternoon. Jason Nix is working on a nice arrow streak. 26 straight games without making an error. His last error was back on April the 17th at Boston. He's just fielded third base beautifully this year. Luke Scott lines out to the shortstop. Zach Stewart continues to impress with his ability to throw strikes. Two quick outs here in the second. Uh, throw strikes and use your defense, and they've been very good so far. Here is the climb up the ladder for Zach Stewart as he made his way up from A ball. That was back in 2008. Four minor league seasons. You can see the different stops that he had in 2009. 
he was one of the prized prospects for the Cincinnati Reds and they were able to get him in that Scott Rowland trade. Blue Jays were not going to trade Rowland unless this kid was involved in that trade. It was really interesting as the Reds projected Stewart as a reliever. And as soon as Blue Jays got him, they put him into the starting role. Derek Lee hits it to left field. Quick inning for Zach Stewart. He has the ability to throw strikes. It took him just seven pitches to have a one, two, three second. In the middle of the second, we're still scoreless. Time since you look back to the decades and how well they played. Since 1960, they moved to Baltimore in the mid 50s. They finished two playoffs in the 60s. Five times they were in playoffs in the 70s, once in the 80s, twice in the 90s, and since then it's been zero. And their win percentage almost 400. Yeah. yeah. Pat Gillick was the general manager back in the 90s and built a sensational team in Baltimore, and they came oh so close to getting to the World Series. But since Gillick left, they just have not been the same organization. 1997, they won 98 games. Davey Johnson was the manager. And after that season, Johnson and the owner, Peter Andrews, got into a contract dispute. Johnson left, and the team has never been able to get back to those winning wins. Gillick left them also, went to Seattle, built a great winning team there, too. Aaron Hill has the count in his favor, 3-0. Well, if Hill can start swinging the bats and continue to wear out the Orioles in this fashion, the Blue Jays will really have a deep lineup. That's what you want to get. Terry Francona calls it thickening of the lineup, making it difficult as you work your way to the bottom of the offensive lineup. No easy outs. Well, that's a good pitch. 3-1 pitch. You made a perfect pitch with the two-seamer. Guthrie's got a lot of ability. And you can see the Blue Jays have hit him hard, but that's not unusual. Blue Jays hit the Orioles no matter who's pitching. Yeah, doesn't matter who's pitching, especially here in this ballpark. It's popped up over in the seats along first base. Guthrie came out of high school in Oregon, signed a letter of intent to go to BYU. There were thoughts that he was going to play quarterback there as well, but after his freshman year, he went on a Mormon mission. Spent two years in Spain without picking up a baseball. When he came back, he thought he'd just get his education, decided to go to Stanford, and walked on to their baseball program. Mark Marcus, the great coach at Stanford, wanted Guthrie to be the closer. And in college baseball, you play three game weekend series, you'd have to pitch all three days, but because of his Mormon background, he didn't want to pitch on Sunday, so he became a starter. And the rest is history. First round draft pick of the Cleveland Indians. That breaking ball to the inner half gets Hill. That's three strikeouts in a row for Guthrie. Right down the middle of the lineup for the 
Baltimore right-hander Guthrie coming right after him. His record's two and eight, but he's got a very good earned run average. You can see his stuff is playing this afternoon. A high breaking ball. Edwin Encarnacion's had success against Guthrie. He's got a couple of home runs. Good cut of that pitch, but it was down around the knees. Adam Jones drifts over into the gap in right center. Two outs. To finish up your thoughts in the history of Jeremy Guthrie, he was drafted by the Indians and came up through their minor league system. And the farm director at that time, John Farrell. John Farrell loves Jeremy Guthrie because he's no nonsense. He's out on the mound and he throws strikes. And Guthrie was probably victimized by a major league contract. He signed a major league contract with the Cardinals and the clock started to tick before he really had time to develop. So the Indians had to make a decision on Guthrie. They couldn't carry him on the team. He came to Baltimore and now he's become a regular starter for them. Claimed off waivers in January 2007. That's when the Indians had a good farm system and they had a loads and loads of young pitchers that they wanted to protect. They couldn't protect them all and Guthrie was let go. Broken back dribbler. Reynolds in front of the shortstop makes the play. Molina's retired. A good inning for Jeremy Guthrie. One, two, three, second. We've played two here at Rogers Center. It's a scoreless game. Transitions adaptive lenses, and we're going to take a closer look at Zach Stewart, who's 24 years old and comes out of Texas. Comes out of Texas, where he was an excellent athlete at Holiday High School in Holiday, Texas, lettered in baseball, basketball, football, track, and tennis. Originally signed by the Cincinnati Reds when they picked him in the third round of the June 2008 first year player draft. So he's an athlete. And we love athletes. Growing up in Texas, he looked up to Nolan Ryan. He said, I was nowhere near the physical pitcher that Ryan was, but I always admired the way he pitched. Zach Stewart finished up real strong last year. He went eight and three over his last ten starts in double A a year ago. And then he pitched in the playoffs, actually met up against Andy Pettit. Pettit was on a rehab assignment to Trenton, New Jersey, and Zach Stewart and Pettit matched zeros through seven innings. That was actually game two of the playoffs. Kyle Drabeck pitched game one for the New Hampshire Ball Club. Mark Reynolds, the third baseman. Stewart falls behind him 2-0. Pretty good pitch, just missed the inside corner. Reynolds starting to heat up a little bit, and he's a very streaky hitter. We've talked about his power and also about the number of strikeouts, but boy, when he gets hot, he can do some damage. 60% of his hits have gone for extra bases. He's got 13 doubles and 12 home runs. 
among his hits. There's the leadoff walk. The thrill of racing returns with the Honda Indy Toronto. Catch all the adrenaline and excitement July 8th to 10th. Get your tickets at HondaIndyToronto.com. Man at first base, Ryan Adams, the second baseman, will stand in. Adams getting the start here. Robert Andino started the first two games of this series. Adams just seven games this season. Twenty four years old now. Played in double A Bowie last year for 298, 134 games. This season at Norfolk hit 303. We saw him in a pinch hitting role at Camden Yards early in June. He had a pinch hit single. And it was only a bat. Been up now for about a month with the big club. He was recalled on May the 20th from AAA. Quick throw to first. This is something Stewart really refined in spring training. Zach Stewart came into a game against the Tigers at Lakeland, and a couple of guys stole on him, and it was no contest. And then. Pat Henkin worked with him in a bullpen and improved his set and throw to first. Adams chases that inside pitch show him too. Looked pretty quick to me right there. Well, you mentioned how athletic he is, and Henkin was really impressed by how quickly Stewart made the adjustment. Last year, midway through the season, he changed his delivery out of the windup. He lowered his leg kick, and he said that allowed him to be more consistent. That Henkin, certainly a tireless worker, has been a great addition to this coaching staff. His enthusiasm is infectious. Yeah, it's infectious, and it's those little things. Ground ball to second. Should be two. Hill to Escobar at second. Back to first. It is another play. You know, there's no substitution for a good arm from your shortstop. This is a play that Escobar has been working on, staying close to that bag and clearing himself. And once he gets clear, throwing a seed over to first base. All you have to do if you're the second baseman, just get it in the air and let Escobar do the rest. And he can dictate how he's going to go across the bag at that point. Two outs for the catcher, Craig Tatum. One thing Zach Stewart's going to find out, you give the infielders a chance to help you in the big leagues, and they will. They will make plays. The base hit through the infield into the left. Tatum has a hit. That's the first hit of the ball game for the Orioles. And if you throw strikes and you keep the ball on the ground, you have a chance to get out. So when you start elevating the ball, the ball's in the air, that's when you really get hurt. Let your infield do the rest, and the infield for the Blue Jays have had a good season. Blue Jays turned two double plays in last night's game. J.J. Hardy pops it up behind second. Hill battling the sun. Can't see it. Bounces over his head. Hardy's headed for second. Tatum will stop at third. And it looked like Hill never really saw the ball he was looking up directly into that sun as he was backpedaling in to right. He got the sunglasses on but it's tough here in the afternoon looking straight up into that sun. Right into that sun and as you're running away you can't shield your eyes with your glove like you can if you're standing underneath it. He checks quickly to see where Bautista is and then throws his hands up saying I can't get it. It'll go as a double for Hardy. He continues to Swing a hot bat, and that time it falls right into no man's land. His 10th double of the season, and the Orioles have something cooking here with two outs. Tatum with the single to the left, and Hardy with the bloop double. Now Nick Markakis, who struck out his first time up. Kekis is working on a six game hit streak. Starting to get some production. Just five home runs and 26 driven in for Mark Kekis. 
He is a four category type of hitter. Good average, good power, good production. And he'll score a lot of runs. Average about 40 points off his career average. Everybody in Baltimore is mystified why he's had the drop. Ball in the strength. Well, there's a good pitch down and away for a strike. Molina's going to talk about this next pitch. Dexter was with the team in spring training. His first big league camp with the Blue Jays, and Molina got to see him. They all saw him pitch, and John Farrell liked the fact that he threw strikes, kept the ball down in his own. Anybody with a pitching background like Farrell would love that approach. We try to simplify pitching as much as possible, and when you keep the ball down, you put the pressure on the hitters to go down and get it, put it in play. Ground ball, big hop for Hill. He'll back up, and Marquez is retired, and Stewart pitches out of a jam. Orioles get a couple of hits, but nothing more. They leave two. The Toronto Blue Jays organization would like to congratulate Tom Hinkey on his induction into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in St. Mary's, Ontario. The induction ceremony will be held this coming Saturday, June 18th at 11 a.m. in St. Mary's. For more information, log on to BlueJays.com or visit BaseballHallOfFame.ca. Tom Hinkey, congratulations to Tom Hinkey. Going to join some of his teammates and his former teammates in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. It's a great weekend at St. Mary's. I played on some teams in Cleveland where we just didn't have that closer at the end of the game, and we lost so many games late, and it's so disheartening. Made the all-star team in 87, and Hanky was on that team. And I'm like, boy, wouldn't that be nice to have somebody like that at the end of a ball game? Got traded over here, and I was like, game over. It is so nice to have a guy like that at the end of the game that you know you're supposed to win. A lot of people believe that the 82, 83, and 84 teams of the Blue Jays would have been as good had they had Tom Hankey at that point. Or just a dominant closer. Somebody to just close it. Those were great teams. Yeah, they could yeah. score a lot of runs. Tom Hankey certainly changed the fortunes of the Blue Jays when he joined the team midway through the 85 season. Davis goes after that breaking ball. Guthrie has four strikeouts. He's got a very good earn run average, and he doesn't walk anybody. He's got the fourth lowest walked per nine innings in the American League, walking just a, a batter and a half for nine innings. So you got to go up there expecting the ball over the plate at some point. He will throw strikes and challenge you. Jason Nix goes after that first pitch, lifts it into center field. Jones is there, two quick outs. 
one time through the order, Jeremy Guthrie has held the Blue Jays to a single hit. That was a Corey Patterson single. Racked up four strikeouts. Blue Jays have always been tough on Guthrie. I mentioned this is his 17th career start against Toronto. He's just two and seven. He pitched well against him a couple of starts ago. It was just two guys who gave him trouble. This guy right here, you know, Escobar and Adam Lynn. That was that four for four day Lynn had in the series finale at Camden Yards. Hit two home runs off Guthrie that afternoon. Both of them came on breaking balls. But then again, Adam Lynn is hitting everybody right now. Just hitting everybody. Ball on a strike, two outs. He's hitting left handed sidearm pitchers. <laughs> Last night, Adam Lynn goes deep. Craig Rapata came into the game to get Lynn down. He left a breaking ball on the inner half, and Lynn hit it out of the ballpark. Hard hit, but right to the shortstop. Jeremy Guthrie has a 1 2 3 third inning. We have played three innings here at the Rogers Center. It's a scoreless game. Guthrie and Zach Stewart. on Roger Sportsnet brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center homeowners helping homeowners perfect afternoon for baseball here at Rogers Center where a scoreless game after three innings Zach Stewart making his major league debut and has allowed just two hits to the Orioles Adam Jones will start things off here in the fourth inning he struck out his first time up Jones goes after a high breaking ball and pops it out of play. Adam Jones hitting 290 for the season, but he has never hit much here at Rogers Center. Coming into this game, a career 200 hitter in 29 games. This has been a tough stop for him on the tour. Still looking for his first hit in this series. First good changeup we've seen from Stewart had Jones way out in front. That's one of the pitches that Ricky Romero used effectively last night versus Jones. Struck him out with a change up. In the same spot as that last pitch. Ground ball, big hop for Hill, and Jones is retired. First out of the four. Zach Stewart, first time, of course, the Orioles have seen him as a veteran hitter. What do you do when you don't have much information? About a pitcher you're facing, what do you look for? First at bat, I think, is going to be different than your last at bat. First at bat, you're going to try and take a lot of pitches. You're going to see the ball come out of his hand. You're, you want to see his breaking ball. You want to see how his fastball moves. Vladdy Guerrero shoots one into right field. That was a high breaking ball. He just stroked it into right. 
So you, you don't have an idea. You don't know how the ball moves when it's coming up to play to what you how much time you have. I think the pitcher has the advantage early as hitters haven't seen it. So that's why I think it's important for Stewart to not fall into one pattern. It's going to pitch him the second time through a little bit different than the first time. I'm watching the Oriole hitters in between innings after they are done hitting and as they go out to their positions they're all talking to each other. What did you see there? How did he pitch you? How did the breaking ball move? Things like that. Well last time he did this. And those are all the little things in baseball that you. You have to do to be successful. I heard John Mayberry talking about that with a teammate of his Rico Cardi gave him a shortcut to hit Nolan Ryan. Luke Scott. Lined out his first time up. It's a ball in the strike. You never know. And Luke Scott's one of those guys. He keeps a book on every pitcher. Goes back after an at battle, write things down into his notebook to remind himself about spin, about the counts, what guys throw in particular counts. And he's one of the guys that Oriole hitters go to if they have some doubts. Hey, Luke, what do you remember about this guy? That started in the minor leagues when he was with the Cleveland Indians organization one afternoon in a minor league game. He pulled out his pen and paper and wrote down some notes and I asked him what he was doing. He said I just wanted to get a little history on this guy. I might face him as I climbed the ladder. And I thought right then and there I said this guy is going to be in the big league someday because he's very smart. And call him off on Stewart and. Looked like he started up with his set position and there was a hesitation so Guerrero moved into second. Hunter Wellington's stat at first base called him for the ball. He can't start and stop. Take a look at it. He is already on the rubber right there. You can see he's waiting for Molina to get set. And I don't know if it was that little movement with his front shoulder. That they thought that he was getting set. Whatever it was, it wasn't much. Very subtle movement that the umpires picked up on. So now Stewart has to work with one out and a man in second. Scoreless ball game here, top of the fourth inning. Up should be playable. Shallow left field. Corey Patterson comes over and gets there and makes the catch. <laughs> Zach Stewart went right to third base on that pop up. Should Knicks have to make a play on it? He didn't hesitate. He knew exactly where he should be and he was right standing at the bag when they threw him the ball back. That's being aware of your surroundings, of, of the situation and reacting to it. Both infielders on the left side of the infield had to go back on that short pop up. Third base was wide open in case Guerrero wanted to tag up. Inside to Derek Lee. This is it right here. He's aware of the situation. He knows his third baseman has taken off, and Guerrero's thinking about it. Look at him go back to tag up. But Zach Stewart is there just in case there would be a play. It's a good heads up play there. Derek Lee. 2 0. Oh. He just hasn't gotten it going this year. He's battled an injury problem. He came off the disabled list and then he went to his grandfather's funeral out in California, and missed a few more days on the bereavement list. And came here and played and had his seven game hit streak. Streak stopped on Tuesday night. And another one that the Blue Jays have held down in this series. He is now 0 for 9 in this series. Now Ricky Romero was tough last night. Just three hits in eight innings plus two batters. Carlos Villanueva, he went six plus two hitters and gave up seven hits. Ricky Romero was as good as we've seen him last night. He came into the ball game. He had all of his pitches, brought his stuff right from the bullpen and took it right to the mound. Fly ball to center field. Rajay Davis drifting over into the gap. It's there and Lee is retired. Jack Stewart gives up a single but strands another base runner. Orioles have left three.
Batista thus far, which is tops in all of baseball. The 2011 MLB All-Star Game will take place on July 12th in Phoenix, Arizona. Cast your vote at BlueJays.com. Fans are reminded you can vote a maximum of 25 times per email address. Continue to vote for Jose Bautista and put him top of the list. Pretty good recognition for Bautista to lead all of baseball. You generally see the Yankees or the Dodgers or somebody like that with a big mass media market. Bautista's having such a phenomenal run that he's gained a lot of attention all across baseball. All across baseball. And you only have a couple more weeks. A couple of weeks. Voting will stop. Corey Patterson in a hole 0 and 2. Jeremy Guthrie has shut down the Blue Jay hitters on just one hit. There's some guys in this order that have hit him well in the past. Wouldn't chase that breaking ball outside. Mentioned Corey Patterson. Two different stints with the Orioles. He played last year in Baltimore. High fly ball to center field. Jones backing up. Patterson's retired. First out of the fourth. He doesn't waste any time. There's Guthrie averaging about 15 pitches per inning. And the one spot in the batting order where he has had a lot of success this year is the number three. He has only given up six hits all season long to a number three hitter. Here's a pretty good one. Generally, that's your best hitter, whether it's for average or power. And every manager likes to put their best hitter in the three spot to guarantee him maximum amount of at bats. Guarantee that he's going to hit in the first inning. Hopefully a couple of runners on base. Five balls for right. Markakis is there. Two outs. Both these pitchers are locked in. Just like the start of last night's game. Jake Arietta and Ricky Romero. So one nothing game into the bottom of the sixth. Juan Rivera hit a solo shot in the bottom of the sixth, made it 2 0. Blue Jays was at a sing couple more runs in the seventh on Adam Lynn's two run homer. Lynn was caught looking at an inside fastball. That's where he threw him that two seam fastball that starts off the corner and breaks back over the Inside edge. That's the pitch right there. there. 95 miles an hour. And Lind will put that in his memory banks. And when he gets to two strikes, he might sit on that, look for that, or just think about it. And if he tries to go back in there, don't give up on it. Pull your hands in. Gets underneath this one. Luke Scott, left fielder, is calling for it. Good inning for Jeremy Guthrie. Three up, three down in the fourth. We play four here at Rogers Center at scoreless. Now it's time for a connected update with Jamie and Greg, live from the Blackberry Broadcast Studio here at Rogers Center.
Center. We have talked about their 16 consecutive losses here at this ballpark, but playing on the road over the last 16 games hasn't been real easy for them as well. Just four wins in those 16 games. And they have lost eight of their last nine on the road. So it's not just here. Average down, runs support, not very good for their starting pitchers. They got off to a great start this year under Puck Showalter. There's a lot of excitement. But right now they have fallen on harder times. They've got some veteran players who know how to hit. They just haven't been able to pull it all together right now. Freddy Guerrero had a base hit his last time up. Problem with the Orioles oftentimes they bring in these veteran hitters. And it's a little bit after the fact. They're not really in their prime guys like Derek Lee you get him five years ago you're talking about a different story. But then of course Orioles couldn't acquire him at that point. They had Miguel Tejada a couple of years ago. He wasn't the same Miguel Tejada was the MVP for the Oakland A's. It seemed like they always went for the name factor instead of the ability and maybe somebody on the rise instead of somebody on the decline. Side two and two. Mark Reynolds leading off the fifth. He walked his last time up. Adam Jones was acquired in a trade from the Seattle Mariners for Canadian Eric Bedard. He was part of a five player package. Broken bat just beyond the reach of Jason Nix. Looked like he had a beat on it, and then it kind of surprised him when it didn't end up in his glove. You know, I've played games here in the daytime and it's very glary if that's a word hard to pick the ball up when it's on the ground and I think that's what happened to Nick he has a beat on it looks like he's on it and then just misses it yeah it looked like that was a ball he expected to catch he'd stop for it and then was surprised when it went past him in the left so lead off single here for Reynolds Ryan Adams hit into a double play his last time up. Grounded to second, and Hill gave it to the shortstop Escobar. Stewart's been around the plate so often, you might think that Buck Showalter would take advantage of that and see if they can't play hit and run here. Adams gave a double look to third base coach John Russell. Tell me they might try and start up the runner. That's exactly what they did, and Adams gets underneath it and flies out to right. There's a quick throw to first base. Reynolds just hung out too long. And Jose Bautista made that strong arm. Might have decoyed him a little bit by throwing his hands up as if he didn't see it. I think he certainly did. It was a hit and run. I mean, you called it right there, partner. But then when the ball was hit to Bautista, he decoyed the runner thinking that the ball was lost in the sun. Reynolds sees that's a fly ball to right field. He picks that up. But look at Bautista go, I don't see it, I don't see it. And now he hangs up. And with that strong arm, he gets him over at first base. Now Bautista throws his hands up as if to say, hey, I don't see it. Reynolds just took too much time to get back, and Lind was on the money with the good stretch. He is always thinking. He is always in the game. Line drive, and boy, how about the fortunes turning around for the Orioles? They get a leadoff single. Bautista makes a double play. Stewart gets another quick inning, just nine pitches for Zach Stewart. He is dealing here at Rogers Center.
mistake of assuming Bautista was just going to throw the ball back to the infield. That's not how he plays the game. He beats him first of all thinking that the ball is going to be in the sun and then Reynolds just starts to jog back to first base, realizes that Bautista is coming after him. And he'll pick up his seventh outfield assist. The first couple of steps just very slow. And by then it's too late. Uh, heads up play by an all-star, Jose Bautista, and that brings a smile to his face. He gets as much satisfaction out of that as he does hitting the home run. And your, your typical 9-3 double play. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that just takes you out of an inning, doesn't it? <laughs> Certainly. Breaking ball to Hill is down and away. Boy, Bautista makes his whole team better. He comes out for early throwing practice, about once a home stand. And then the rest of the players kind of follow him out there. So I wonder what Jose's doing out there. Oh, he's trying to get better. Hmm. I think I'll follow. I mean, that's what great <laughs> players do. They make people around them better. And if your best player is a leader like a Jose Bautista, everybody else is going to follow. You know, and that's truly the definition of a leader, somebody that makes everybody better. You look around the Yankees, Derek Jeter, because he's run the bases so hard throughout his whole career, everybody runs the bases. And it's not anything that a player has to be told. Big bouncing ball, just foul at third. When I played for Kansas City, George Brett was playing. And you played with George, and you know how he played the game. When your best player plays as hard as that, you feel guilty if you don't play that hard. Yeah. I mean, if you really care about your team and your teammates, huh. it, it's embarrassing if the best player can play that hard, and then the rest of us guys with no talent, if we lack off, mm -hmm. slack off, it's uh, it's embarrassing. But boy, every organization wishes to have just a few of those guys on their team. Everybody will get right in line and play the game the right way. Two and two to Aaron Hill. Scoreless game here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Jays have managed just one hit off of Jeremy Guthrie. Hill wouldn't chase. And just to finish up that thought with the great players, when you look at the championship caliber team, they have three or four of those guys. Mm -hmm. You look at the Boston Red Sox. They've got Pedroia and Euclid and Gonzalez and Crawford and Ellsbury up and down the order. Every one of them plays like Jose Bautista every single day. Every day. Veritek out there when he is an everyday player. Great off walk. Thrill of Racing returns with a Honda Indy Toronto. Catch all the adrenaline and excitement July 8th to 10th. Get your tickets at HondaIndyToronto.com. Edwin Encarnacion flying to center field his first time up. Corey Patterson had a stolen base in the first inning. Got a pretty good jump off of Jeremy Guthrie, who's generally very quick to the plate. You'll have to keep an eye on Aaron Hill also. Hill hasn't been thrown out this year. Eight for eight for Aaron Hill. Picked his spots very prudently. Obviously in a scoreless game, you want to ignite the offense. Create some movement on the infield. I think you'll wait and let this guy swing the bat. He's hitting 450 with a couple of home runs in his career. There he goes. Ground ball to short. Hardy looks at second. Doesn't have a play. And then goes to first to retire in Carnation. Hill was on the move. That keeps the Blue Jays out of a double play. Well, I'm glad he did start the runner. There would have been two outs. John Farrell trying to make something happen. Even though Encarnacion's had great numbers, he's going to start Aaron Hill's to hit and run. As you see, Hill look back in to see where the ball is. Hustles in the second base. He is now in scoring position with just one out. Catcher Jose Molina. Molina grounded to third his first time up. He's out in front of that breaking ball.
Molina's done a good job batting with runners in scoring position. He's three for seven. But he's delivered some key hits. He's moved into more of a traditional backup role now with J.P. Aaron Senior doing most of the catching. Day games after night games. Certain pitchers that he'll get starts with. But he's done a good job of. Coaching up some of these pitchers when he's out there. Well, Aaron Sebia talked last night and he gets the day off and he'll do the majority of the catching now. Molina shoots it into center. Jones backing up, Hill tagging at second. Jones throw on the way to third. Not in time, Aaron Hill moves up. Take the extra 90 feet in the scoreless game. You have to. A play like that could be the difference between a win or a loss. When you can move up like that, it puts the defense a little bit more pressure on them on the infield to make the play. Catcher has to block ball in dirt. You just go out there as the center fielder is taking himself away from third. You tag up and move up. So there's two outs now, Rajay Davis. Mark Reynolds is going to come in to talk to Guthrie now. This must have something to do with Davis and the ability to bunt, I'm sure. Just a little reminder from Reynolds, hey, you got a break now. If this guy shows bunt, get over to that foul line. He's going to play deep at third base, too. Rajay has been struggling. It wouldn't be a bad idea to lay one down. Yeah, he's chasing that breaking ball off the plate, and Guthrie's giving him a steady diet. Of breaking balls away. Is a breaking ball an easier or harder pitch to bunt? Depends on where it is. You know, if it starts on the inside part of the plate, it comes there to the middle, it's easier. But you just said it, the pitchers have been pitching him away, and that is a tough pitch, the breaking ball that's away or off the, the corner to try and get down the third base line. Davis has the count in his favor, two and one. Ooh, tough call. Davis thought it was off the plate, had a pretty good look at it. Bob Davidson called it a strike. It's two and two. Strike three call. Came right back with a fastball and strikes out Davis. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Jeremy Guthrie. He leaves a base runner in third. Came right back with the fastball. After five, it's still scoreless.
five innings. Guthrie has helped the Blue Jays to a single hit. Zach Stewart making his major league debut has been very good as well. Yeah, five innings, four hits for Stewart. Defense has helped him out with a couple of double plays. Both pitchers have been around the plate. Just one walk each. Five strikeouts for Guthrie is two. Those two for Stewart came in the first inning. And he has put the ball in play after that. And he looks like he belongs. He sure does. This is his first major league game. Was the first pitch strike to J.J. Hardy. Hardy had a bloop double his last time up. Pop fly that fell untouched in right field. Long drive left field. Corey Patterson looking up. Home run, J.J. Hardy. His seventh home run of the season has put the Orioles out in front one to nothing. This is a player, J.J. Hardy, who in 2007 and 2008 with Milwaukee Brewers hit 50 home runs and drove in 154 runs. He can turn on pitches, and that's exactly what he does here. Head down, and he goes through it. Really no doubt about it to left field. One of the few pitches that Jack Stewart elevated here this afternoon, and Hardy took care of it. Home run number seven on the year. J.J. Hardy has been a tough out for the Blue Jays. Had a double in last night's game. Had two hits, three hits in the series opener. Two balls and a strike to Nick Markakis. The Orioles have broken through here against Zach Stewart. J.J. Hardy's solo home run. Come right back and throw strikes. Don't let that one mistake ruin your day. Come back and get the rest of these hitters. Comes right back with a breaking ball that Markek has fouled up. Well, Stewart knows well enough that his team can score some runs. And they have been scoring runs in bunches. Just has to keep his focus and continue to throw strikes. Molina tried to sell that one to Bob Davidson, but he wouldn't buy it. He wasn't buying. He set up on the inside part of the plate, and it was a breaking ball that missed away. Held it there for a little bit longer for the home plate umpire. That's going to be a tough play, and Knicks won't even have a throw. Marquez is with an infield hit. For the man on, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, we thought the Yankees might get some pitching help, but we didn't think it'd be a farmhand from the Phillies. We generally expect them to go out and trade for somebody, get a veteran pitcher in there, somebody along the lines of a Bartolo Colon or Freddie Garcia. Use their minor league system to get a veteran, a guy who's been through the wars. I still think that they're going to do something in the next month or so. Right now, they're absolutely wearing out the Texas Rangers, giving them all kinds of problems. Beat them 12 to 4 last night. Four straight games now that the Yankees have scored double digits against Texas. Yankees have always had the Rangers numbers going back to when the Rangers were a good playoff team. They can never beat the Yankees. Adam Jones is 0 for 2. This one up. 
Jason Nix, the third baseman, moves into foul ground. First out of the sixth. One out now for Vladdy Guerrero. Guerrero singled in two trips. Goes after the first pitch. It hits it past Knicks all the way down the left field line. Marquez is headed to third. He's being waved home. Patterson took a long time to get it down in the quarter, and Marquez scores all the way from first. Vladimir Guerrero with the RBI double. Two nothing Orioles. 27th RBI of the season for Guerrero. Playing left field here at Rogers Center is tough. Dave Johnson did it better than anybody. You're not sure if the ball is going to kick out and hit the wall and bounce to you, or it's going to make its way into the wall. And that's where Patterson had some problems right there. He wasn't real sure if it was going to hit that little part of the wall that jets out. For the Orioles, fortunately, it goes into the corner. Marcakis can come all the way around to score from first base. And it's now two to nothing. Now Guerrero, two hits here this afternoon. One out, Guerrero at second. Scott has lined out and popped up. Foul is straight back into the screen. Zach Stewart has been touched up for a couple of runs here. They laid off home run in the six by J.J. Hardy. And then the RBI double by Vladimir Guerrero. This is the third time through the order the Orioles have a little bit better feel about Zach Stewart. Making ball just downstairs. Sean Camp starts to loosen up in the Blue Jays bullpen. Stewart's only thrown 71 pitches. He's been very economical. A couple of strikeouts in the first inning. Everything else has been put in place since then. Off speed pitch and Luke Scott strikes out. It's a good time for his third strikeout. Luke Scott had a three hit game the other day, his first of the season. He's hit well against the Blue Jays in this ballpark, and he sets down a good hitter. Two down now. Runner at second base. That hit by Guerrero is a milestone for him. 2,500 hits now for Guerrero. Larry Clee pops it out of play. That's why the Orioles got the baseball. To hit that souvenir for Guerrero. 2,500 hits. Obviously, terrific plateau. It's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I think when it's all said and done, that's where he'll end up. Very clean. Hits it into right field. Baptiste is there, but the Orioles scored two. J.J. Hardy with a solo home run. Vladimir Guerrero's got a couple of hits here this afternoon. This hit, number 2,500 for his career. The Orioles lead it two to nothing.
two nothing lead. Jeremy Guthrie when he left the field after his last half inning went into the dugout and then spoke to the assistant trainer Brian Ebel and Ebel followed him into the clubhouse and there were some problems with his back. He has been taken out of this ball game and the bullpen will take over Guthrie throwing very well just one hit over five innings but it appears as though he's had to give in to a back problem. Yeah, dealing too. Five innings, one hit, no earned runs, five strikeouts, just 64 pitches. So the Blue Jays maybe they catch a break as Jeremy Guthrie's afternoon is finished off. So we head into the sixth inning. Jim Johnson, big Jim Johnson takes over. He is tied for seventh in the American League and holds with 10. And he has been on a roll since May the 14th. He has taken that ERA and cut it in half. It was at 514 and now sits at 254. And he was dealing here the other night. Johnson's got great stuff. Power fastball, good hard breaking ball. He's developed a changeup as well. He throws a heavy ball, one that feels like a shot put when you square it up. Facing Nix. Throw out to center his first time up. The ball sneaks through the infield, gets into center, leadoff single. So no matter how good Jim Johnson is, the Blue Jays are happy Guthrie's out of the game. They couldn't solve him at all. Yeah, the way he was throwing. You got to square it up or it's going to hurt your hands. The way the, the movement that Johnson has, and that's what Nix does as he muscles the ball into center field for his first hit, just the second this afternoon by the Blue Jays. Back to the top of the order. Escobar is grounded to short twice. Bouncing ball. This could be two. Bobbled by Adams. All oh, hands are safe. Boy, that should have been a double play. Ryan Adams couldn't find the handle. Got ahead of himself as he was thinking about a double play. They end up with nothing. He certainly did. Got to get ahead of himself. Trying to shovel the ball to J.J. Hardy to make the play at second base. The glove goes out to get it. The other hand stays away from it. You can see it's down and he boots it. Still can't come up with it. Escobar beats it at first base. Like he took his eye off of it as he tried to shovel it to Hardy. They were probably only going to get just one out anyway. Well, that's a big play, obviously. The Orioles have taken a 2 0 lead. The Blue Jays threatening to answer back right here in the bottom half of the sixth. It's the second error of the season for Adams, and now the inner defense for the Orioles, anticipating a bunt by Corey Patterson. The corners are in, the middle infielders are moving around. Patterson squares to bunt, bunts it to the first baseman, Derek Lee. Goes to First, the sacrifice is executed perfectly. When you've got some runners on the base who can run, they have a little speed. You don't have to be perfect with your butt. Just get it down. Get it down, but don't hit it too hard. Let the speed do the rest. But now the Blue Jays are in business. Couple of runners in scoring position for the middle of the lineup. Well, you got to take advantage of this situation. You got your RBI guys up. You're down by two. Does he challenge Bautista here with first base open? I think he goes after him. There's a bullet in the center field. That's in front of Jones. Escobar is coming around. What a great job by Escobar. He broke immediately, sensing that ball wasn't going to be caught. And just like that, the Blue Jays have tied it. They have to pitch to Bautista. With Adam Lind on deck and the way he is swinging the bat. Well, he doesn't waste any time. First pitch fastball and now Pista's all over it. Line drive, single to center field, and Escobar reading the ball right away. That's what you do in batting practice. When you're out there at second base, you take a couple of the balls off the bat to read those type of plays. But again, he hesitated in third, assuming he was going to be stopped. Butterfield just kept waving him, but he got a good enough jump he could score. Bautista at first. Big swing from Lynn. Well, we've seen 
Mark Reynolds here this afternoon assumed Baptiste was just going to lollygag it back into a second. He got doubled up. Escobar went into third and slowed down like he expected just to be held there. As a runner, you've got to run as hard as you can until those coaches stop you. That's what they're there for. Just use them. And coaches will tell you that's the toughest thing for them to get a read on the effort the runner's given them. Give me your best effort. Give me your best effort, and then I'll judge whether you should go or not. But if you're not giving me 100%, I don't have anything to go by. Well, how about Patterson's sack bunt? Bautista made sure that was fully impactful. Patterson put down a perfect bunt, and Bautista on the first pitch drives in two. Hot shot, base hit into right. Bautista will think about it. Marquez has a good arm. A couple of right fielders know each other very well. Bautista said, nope, I'm going to have to stop right here. Lynn has his first hit of the afternoon. You know, he gave the effort, though, and made Marquecas make a play. You know going in that Marquecas is a good outfielder with a good arm, but you've got to make him catch the ball and stop you. Lynn has been on everything. He rifles this ball by Adams, the second baseman. Good job by Marquecas. Cut that ball off and hold him to a single. Three hits in the inning. Blue Jays had just one before Guthrie left. Guthrie left with a strained back. The Blue Jays were happy to see him go. They had nothing against Guthrie. Only two base runners had reached the Patterson single in a leadoff walk by Hill in the fifth. Made it all the way around the third, but was left stranded there. Change up down and away. Jim Johnson has been tough on the Blue Jays and he has thrown the ball very well. He had a perfect one, two, three inning against the Blue Jays in Baltimore. And he came into this series, threw the ball very well. He's Eighth good. inning of Tuesday's game. He's good and they use him and they use him often. The looper in the center. That'll get down. Bautista got a good break and now he's going to be held at third. Jones throws the ball very well and got to that ball very quickly. Butterfield had Bautista coming around third, but then saw Jones get the ball and threw up a late stop sign. But he broke on the ball very quickly to Adam Jones, and he's got seven outfield assists, which leads center fielder. This one right at the center fielder on a couple of hops. Bautista reads it right away. Here it comes. You can see Butterfield right away. He's got the center fielder in his sights. He's also got his base runners in sights, and he throws up the stop sign. Rick Adair, the pitching coach, up to talk to Jim Johnson. Craig Tatum, the catcher, listening in. Well, that was a good example of Brian Butterfield getting way down the line so he could see the angle of the center fielder, where the ball is in relationship to the outfielder, and then where his base runner was. And then he made the decision. Everything is lined up in Jones's favor. I'm going to stop Bautista. Just get a, a good read. And he knows by going over the scouting reports who can throw, who's accurate, who's got the good arm. You don't want to be running into any outs right here. Edwin Encarnacion plays off the high. Fastball. Jason Berkin pitched a third of an inning here last night and gave up a double to Juan Rivera down the right field line. Two and oh.
Number four would be sweet right about now, <laughs> wouldn't it? I'll take a tweener. I won't be too greedy. I'll take a tweener right to left center. Two and out. Oh. Bounced off his foot. Bautista is at 30 at a two run single. Lynn single to right field. And Hill singled into center. Four hits in the inning. Two runs in already. Bases loaded, one out. Good swing and a miss. 95 with some late movement on it. Aaron Hill at first base can get a big lead off the bag. Derek Lee's way behind him, and that's important. Should there be a ground ball on the infield? Give him a chance to break up two. There's that ground ball. Bill gets to second. Can't do anything about it. Brian Adams does a good job of turning the double play at second base, and Carnes Schoen hits the ground ball, but the Blue Jays tied it up. Two runs on four hits. At the end of six, it's a 2 2 game. I believe they're supposed to have Nishioka back today playing second base coming back from that broken leg. Twins have done all right. They've hung in there considering all the injuries. Now, of course, Justin Mono's on the DL yeah. with a wrist problem. Right. Eight and two of the last ten. They've won three in a row. They're still 12 games under 500 and nine games behind Cleveland. They'll make some noise. They'll make some noise before it's all said and done. You can count on that. Zach Stewart. Back to a tie game. It's 2 2. Bottom third of the Orioles order. And Mark Reynolds gets hit on the first pitch. Sportsnet connected after the game with Ryan Leslie on Sportsnet's East Ontario, West and Pacific. He'll break down the U.S. Open preview. He'll recap the Canucks loss of game seven. And a disappointing finale to a great season. Right after the ball game, Brian Leslie will break it all down. 2 2 ball game here in the seventh inning. Mark Reynolds has been on base all three times this afternoon. Brian Adams has hit into two double plays one a conventional double play, 4 6 3. The next one. Fly ball to right field. The unconventional 9 3 DP. This time he shows bunt, snap throw to first, and Reynolds is back. We're in the seventh inning. Jason Frazier now gets up to throw. Sean Camp had been throwing in the 
sixth inning. Two and oh. Zach Stewart has done a pretty good job. Pitching into the seven. He has held the Orioles to seven hits. He's in a two two ball game. Here's Walton out now to talk to his young right hander and give Jason Frazier a little more time. He's had some base runners the last couple of innings, so I think this is a, a chance for Bruce Walton to come out there, help him catch his breath, remind him what they want to do here in this situation. You see the whole infield on the mound to talk to him. Give me what you got now. Just 77 pitches to this point in the ball game for Stewart been very economical. Retired the first six batters of his big league career. Now the home plate. Two and one. Important part of the lineup for Stewart at this bottom third of the order. Don't turn it over. J.J. Hardy has been on fire in this series. He's the leadoff batter. He homered off Stewart in the sixth. And that's probably what Bruce Walton said to him also. Hey, you got the bottom of the lineup. Let's go challenge him. Forget about that runner over at first base. Reynolds is four for four at stolen bases, but you got the number eight hitter. Let's go get him. It's all about managing the lineup if you're a pitcher. Just know where you're at. These guys are hitting down in the order for a reason. They don't hit for a high average. They're inconsistent. And this is the part of the lineup you really want to take charge of. Ball to short. Escobar to Hill for one. Back to first double play. Brian Adams had a rough day. He hit into three double plays and committed an error. Six four three. If you're scoring at home, Taylor May right to Escobar. Catch it. Make a good throw and let Hill do the rest. And that's what you have to do with the bottom of the lineup. Challenge him with fastball. He's got a good sinking fastball, so you're going to get a lot of ground ball outs. It's a big one right there. Number nine hitter, Craig Tatum. He singled his first time up, then lined to shortstop. Blue Jays have now turned 68 double plays. One of the double plays today went 9 3. Bautista caught a fly ball off the bat of Adams and then caught. Mark Reynolds drifting back to first. I would say that Zach Stewart has been in control of his game today. Come up to the big leagues from double A, make your first major league start, pitch into the seventh inning. Not a manager in the world who wouldn't take that. Give yourself seven innings, give yourself a chance to win the game. Good pitch there. Didn't get the call. And look like you belong. That's the one thing that it's been impressive for Zach Stewart. He looked like he has belonged in, in command this afternoon. Another good pitch in a good spot. Full count. Zach Stewart gets Craig Tatum a good sinking fastball, his fourth strikeout of the afternoon. And he did manage the bottom third of the order. Gave up a hit batter, a double play, and then the strikeout to end the inning. He goes seven strong innings of a 2 2 game.
from Norfolk last night before the game, and he pitched one third of an inning, gave up a double to Juan Rivera. He's on to face Molina, Davis, and Nix here in the bottom of the seventh. Birkin is 27 years old, six foot 205 right hander. Had one year in the big leagues. He has started some games for the Orioles in his young career. He's also come out of the bullpen as a long man. With 24 starts for Baltimore in 2009. American set to work and enjoying those big comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone. A guest of TD Canada Trust right in the front row and they've been entertained to another good ball game. 2-2 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Perfect day for baseball at Rogers Center. The roof is wide open. 31,822 fans in attendance and they got to see Zach Stewart make his major league debut. Stewart had a perfect 1-2-3 first inning including his first Major League strikeouts. He struck out Mark Akis and Jones to start the first. He leaves the seventh inning in a 2 2 ball game. Boy, he's pitched well. Now it's time to get him a run right here. Bottom third of the order. Jose Molina takes the first pitch strike and looks back at Bob Davidson and said, Bob, I think that ball was low. He's had a good view all afternoon from behind the plate. After that breaking ball, he's in a hole 0 2. Juan Rivera has taken a spot in the on deck circle, getting his bat ready. Rivera, as we mentioned, had a double off Birkin in last night's game. Three pitch strikeout for Jason Birkin. Throw out. He threw out Jose Molina. And that first pitch was the entire root of the problem. Bob yeah. Davidson has ejected Molina from the ball game. He had something to say to him after that first pitch. And then when he swung at that ball for strike three, had something else to say to Bob Davidson. He's been around a long time and he wasn't going to stay and take it. So Molina is thrown out of this ball game. And I wonder if that changes now John Farrell, what he's going to do if he wants to pinch hit. Well, he has not made the announcement of Rivera yet. That might train, change his entire thinking. Mm -hmm. But the first pitch of the at-bat is the one that created the problems for Jose Molina. Fastball. Molina thinks it's outside, but it's called a strike. And that forces him then. You see him talking right now to the home plate umpire. That forces him to swing at that pitch. And he has something to say to him right there and tossed right away. Anytime you argue balls and strikes, that's an automatic ejection. So John Farrell will indeed send Rivera to the plate. Juan Rivera will bat for Rajay Davis. So JP and CB will come in to catch. Rivera will be sent up as a pinch hitter. And the Blue Jays are going to end up with all their extra men into a game. First pitch breaking ball. There's Aaron Sevier loosening up down in the bullpen now. Don Makamatsu talking about their options of how they're going to play defense. They don't have many options. Obviously, just three extra players. Aaron Sebi will go behind the plate for Molina, who's been ejected. John Farrell was talking before the game today. They will probably make a roster move after this game as they head into interleague play. A pitcher going to go, and John McDonald is going to come back. Now, you could leave Rivera in the game and have him play left to move Patterson to center without using Mike McCoy. But Rivera's bat has played of late. One for two as a pinch hitter this season. Blue Jays only have 14 pinch hitted bats. There's another breaking ball, and Birkin strikes out the first two batters he's faced here in the seventh. Birkin a little bit sharper this afternoon than yesterday. Gave up the double to Rivera in his one third innings work. It's a late breaking pitch. 
That gets Rivera swinging at it. So Americans, the second reliever to work. Jeremy Guthrie started the ball game, went five strong innings, and then left with what has been reported as a strain back. Jim Johnson pitched the sixth. They gave up two runs on four hits. Jason Nix gets underneath it and lifts the fly ball to left. Luke Scott is there. Birkin comes out of the bullpen and has a good one, two, three, seventh inning. It's a two-two game. It's like Jason Frazier might come out of the pen. in left field and with that Corey Patterson will move from left to center Jose Molina was ejected by home plate umpire Bob Davidson so JP Aaron Cedia will take over behind the plate and Jason Frazier has come out of the bullpen after a seven inning outing by the rookie Zach Stewart who yes. held his own in his first major league game he certainly did seven innings seven hits four strikeouts Frazier in for the 30th time this year Third on the club in appearances now. This is appearance number 441, and he's been good. 296 earned run average. He has handled the lefties with ease this year, hitting under 200 against Frazier. Got to hold his last time out a couple of days ago against these Orioles when he threw an inning, gave up just a hit. J.J. Hardy, he had a two for three day against Zach Stewart. You get a different look this time. Jason Frazier. Eighth inning, 2 2 ball game. First pitch swing, big hop for Knicks deep at third. One out. The thrill of racing returns with the Honda Indy Toronto. Catch all the adrenaline and excitement July 8th to 10th. Get your tickets at HondaIndyToronto.com. Nick Markakis, the right fielder, is set to face Jason Frazier. Markakis 0 for 6 against the Blue Jays' right hand. Extended his hit streak here with a single, had an infield single his last time up. Cake is now with a seven game hit streak. Frazier falls behind 2 0. Oh. Jason Frazier has been consistent all year long. His ability to throw strikes to both sides of the plate with his fastball have been huge. And then last time we saw him, he had the best split finger changeup we've seen from him all year long. Certainly did. Didn't pick up a strikeout. The last time, but 
had the Oriole hitters really waving at a lot of pitches. Been tough on left-handers all season long. Fastball for a strike. Ground ball to short. Backhanded by Escobar. In time to get Martakis. Lots of baseball action to continue here on Sportsnet. Tonight it'll be the Red Sox at Tampa Bay to take on the Rays. The game will start at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific on Sportsnet East, Ontario, West, and Pacific in quite a pitching matchup. Clay Buckholz for the Red Sox against David Price for Tampa Bay. Josh Beckett last night was terrific going up against Jeremy Hellickson. The Red Sox won three to nothing. Beckett continues to dominate. Gave up one hit, an infield hit to Reed Brignac, who was hit 174. Beckett's been great this year. Adam Jones pulls back from an inside fastball. Adam Jones is 0 for 11 in this series. And it's going to continue if Frazier makes pitches like that. Yeah, that one right on the corner. Had Adam Jones shaking his head after that one. That's the old tip of the cap pitch right there. You throw that pitch and I'll just tip my cap. One and one, two outs. There's that great changeup, boy. That is a great pitch, and he's throwing it very well right now. You know, on top of pulling the string and, and going back and forth, it's got great movement on it. It's almost like a sinker, and then you pull the string on it. Right handers, left handers, it doesn't matter. Outfield playing deep with Jones, no doubles in this situation. There's the strikeout, Aaron Sebia will put the tag on Jones in a good one, two, three, eighth inning. Jason Frazier shuts down the Orioles. He gets Jones to chase the splitter in the dirt. Big strikeout. Now it's time for Connected Update. Here's Jamie and Greg from the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. by the all-new Equus from Hyundai, redefining luxury. J.J. Hardy will get the scoring underway for the Orioles in the sixth inning with his seventh home run. He has been hot over his last 21 games, an on-base percentage of over 400. They would add another run that inning. Blue Jays storm right back with two of their own in the sixth, and that's where we sit. We head into the bottom of the eighth inning, a 2-2 tie. 
J.J. Hardy's been a good pickup for the Orioles. Back to the top of the order. This is where the Blue Jays have done the most damage. Top third of the order gets on and then turn it over to Lind and Aaron Hill. Last time through the order, Blue Jays were able to score two runs on four hits in a similar situation. Jason Birkin pitched very well for the Orioles last year in the relief role, and then he had a shoulder problem late in August that put him on a disabled list. He's been back and forth the minors this year. High pop up in direct. Marquecas with a long run. Takes the ball in fair territory. First down of the eight. Corey Patterson's had a single. He also had a very important sack bunt in that sixth inning. Put down a perfect sacrifice bunt to move the runners into scoring position. And Jose Bautista drove both runners in with a single to center. Yeah, inning set up by an error. A couple of runners on, and then the sacrifice bunt. Three straight hits. The Blue Jays were in business. And then a double play shut down the scoring. Shot to second, backhanded by Adams in time to get Patterson. Brad Adams has been involved in a lot. Committed that error in the six, as Pep talked about. He's also hit the three double plays here this afternoon. It's a rough day. Yep. So Jose Bautista, everybody loves Jose here in Toronto. A two run single. He drove in both runs and tied the score in the sixth. Take an extra base hit right now. Knock yourself in or get an extra base hit so the outfield's playing deep. Right to Hardy. Hit it hard, but right at the shortstop. Birkin has another good inning. A one, two, three, eighth inning. Now let's send it back to the Connected Studios. Here's Ryan Leslie. Rogers, hello, speed boost, goodbye, waiting. Another first, only from Rogers. Jose Bautista is not just about hitting or hitting home runs. He can play defense too, and he's got a great arm. He coys the runner a little bit as that ball backs him up in right field, and then with a strong arm, picks up his seventh outfield assist, nailing the runner at first base before he can get back for a double play. He can do a little bit of everything on this field. Jose Bautista just plays with his head up. He understands that there's always something you can be looking for, and he caught Mark Reynolds halfway between first and second and doubled him up. John Rouse comes out of the bullpen as Jason Frazier had a very good eighth inning. He had a strikeout in a perfect inning. Seven for nine save opportunities for the big right-hander for the Blue Jays. 29 games now for Rouse. Nine walks, 19 strikeouts. He'll come after you, throw strikes. And that's 
just what Vladimir Guerrero, the first batter that he will be facing, will see this afternoon. Guerrero has only walked seven times all season long. So you got a strike pitcher and a batter that doesn't like to walk. You know he'll be hacking. And first pitch cutter just off the plate outside. Guerrero two for three this afternoon. Drove in a run in the sixth inning. One of those seven walks came in this series. Got a leadoff walk in the eighth inning ahead of Matt Weeder's sixth home run. But he's all about swinging. Wherever it is, if it's in this zip code, he's going to be swinging it. Got the high fastball. That's what Roush does so well. And not only does he pitch in and out and up and down, he pitches forward and backward with velocity. Something that he has started this year, starting to throw a little bit more of a change up. Takes a little something off that one. Vladimir Guerrero has been a dramatic run producer in his heyday in Montreal. You can see the home runs, 40 home runs twice in that four year span. Lots of RBIs, stolen bases, a great throwing arm in the outfield. Went to the Angels and basically became a DH, but he's still so dangerous. And then bounces that ball through the infield into center, his third hit of the afternoon. A leadoff base hit here in the night. Picked up a milestone his last time up, and Roush can't believe it. There's going to be a pinch runner. It'll be Nolan Rimel will come in and run for Guerrero. Roush made a good pitch. On Vladimir Guerrero, breaking ball down and away, and he just squeezes it in the center field. Now he couldn't have rolled it in a better position. He bounced it right over the mound and split the infielders. Nolan Rimo, the first as the pinch runner. Luke Scott, the batter. Scott's been shut out here this afternoon, 0 for 3. First pitch past Lynn into right field. Rimo, quick turn around second. He'll go to third. How much Lynn could do with that shot? He was hit to his glove side, and by the time he dove, it was past him into right. You're so close when you are holding that runner over at first base and a left handed pole hitter's up. The reactionary time is not very long. You see Lynn come off and the ball rifles by him that allows Reinhold to go all the way to third base. Tomahawk by Luke Scott into right field. So the Orioles are threatening with nobody out here in the ninth. John Roush started the inning. Derek Lee is 0 for 3. J.P. Aaron Sevier is behind the plate. Jose Molina started and was ejected. Derek Lee goes after the first pitch. Escobar at shortstop in. Got to cut the runoff at the plate. Interesting situation here. They're not all the way in, just halfway in. Ball hit to them. They'll have a shot at Lymel. Anything on the ground, you got to go home. It's, it's the ninth inning of a tie score. You're not going to turn a double play. You're not going to trade two outs for a run in the ninth. Now because Lee hits the ball so hard, they don't have to play right in on the edge of the infield. You can see Escobar about halfway. It's, a, it's short and Hill a little closer. But Escobar can play back as well because of his arm strength. That's right. Give himself a little bit of depth. Get to some balls that you might not if you have to play in. Good block by Aaron Sebia. Luis Perez, the left-hander, heating up in a hurry. Yeah, 
Ninth inning, a 2 2 ball game. Orioles threatening first and third. Nobody out. Little tapper. Nicks. Quick throw to the plate. Not in time. Aaron Sevier had to catch the ball by the time he tagged Rival. Nolan's all the way across home plate. That's a tough play for Nick's just a swinging bunt up the third baseline. You got to catch it and you've got to throw it all in one motion and you have to be accurate. It almost has to be a perfect throw to the catcher because the ball and the runner are going to meet right at the same time. Reimold's going on contact and he's going to aggressively slide in the plate. You see Aaron CB has got to go up and a good play call by Bob Davison. He's all over this. He is watching to see if the runner gets onto the plate and he does. And John Roush's afternoon after three batters will be over. Roush is charged with the run on three hits. He'll turn things over to the bullpen. The left-hander Luis Perez will come on. Nolan Ryan as the Nolan Ryan will scores the go-ahead run. The summer hit is back. Who will be discovered on this season's America's Got Talent? New episodes every Tuesday and Wednesday on City TV. Let's take a look at that tag one more time. Again, it's a do or die play at the plate by Nix. He's got to catch it, throw it, and make a low throw to get the runner at the plate because they're all going to be arriving at the same time. The throw is up. Aaron CB has got to reach for it, and that gives a path for Rhymehole to slide underneath Aaron CB with a tie breaking run. And the Orioles have taken the lead here in the ninth. Luis Perez comes out of the bullpen trying to find out who's got the coverage at second base. Good arm for Perez. It's a good situation for him to come in, aggressively attack these hitters, try and get the ball on the ground. He's got good movement on his fastball. Felix P.A. has taken over as a pinch runner for Luke Scott at second base. A little bit more speed. Reynolds bunts it up the third base line. That's hugging the foul line and then just trickles into foul territory. Pretty good bunt, but didn't stay fair. Not a bad idea. Play for a couple more runners out there. Some speed on the bases. PA and Derek Lee. Reynolds has been on base all three times. He walked, was hit by a pitch, and he's also singled. The Jays have turned three double plays here this afternoon. Inside pitch. Ball on the strike. Perez had a rough outing his last time out against the Red Sox when an inning in the third gave up five hits. He was charged with four earned runs.
Didn't make any difference who you were pitching that no. weekend against the Red Sox. Everybody got hit. Unless your name is Mike McCoy. McCoy had the one, two, three, and everybody got hit around by the Red Sox. They were just locked in. Well, Blue Jays have fallen behind here in the ninth, but these are big runs out there on bases. Luis Perez has to keep it a one run ball game. Blue Jays have the middle of the order scheduled to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Lind Hill and Encarnacion. Two and two. Perez has a good fastball. He clocked around 93 miles an hour, but what I like about it is it's got movement on it. He can get that ball on the ground. Ball almost got away from Aaron Sebia, but he keeps PA at second. For the ninth inning, Felix PA came on as a pinch runner for Luke Scott, who had singled. Derek Lee had the swinging one up the third baseline. He'll pick up an RBI that has given the Orioles the lead. Mark Reynolds with a full count against Luis Perez. The bases are loaded. Walton just hung up the phone with the bullpen. Looks like Sean Camp's going to get up for a second time here this afternoon. Nobody out. Now you have to bring the infield in. Everything is going home to first. Adams has hit into three double plays this afternoon. Everybody in. Looking for the ball on the ground once again. There's pitch breaking ball. Blue Jays might have got a call there. Looked like that pitch could have been outside. Sean Camp indeed is throwing. Bob Davidson having a little bit of a back and forth with the Orioles dugout. Davidson threw out Jose Molina in the seventh inning after Molina struck out. Ball on the strike. Nobody out. Orioles have scored a run here in their half of the night. PA Lee Reynolds on base. Luis Perez walked the first batter he faced. John Farrell went to the bullpen, brought in Roush to start the inning. John Roush gave up three consecutive hits. A bouncing ball base hit to Vladdy Guerrero. A line drive base hit. By Luke Scott, and then a swinging bunt base hit by Derek Lee. Ball is shot down the right side, but that'll reach the seats well out of play. Stop the bleeding. That's what you are thinking about right here. Nail that runner at the plate. Stop the bleeding. Give yourself a chance to win it in the bottom of the ninth inning. Those add on runs come back to get you. One and two to Adams. Breaking ball popped back out of play. Ryan Adams doesn't have an RBI in the big leagues. Played in double A last year and he has just been called up. Brian Roberts continues to deal with headaches and concussion like syndromes. He's on a disabled list. Adams came up on the 20th of May after hitting over 300 in Triple The ball is through there. One run will come in to score. Derek Lee is getting the wave around third. Now he'll be stopped. PA scores. It's a 4 2 game. 
as Ryan Adams gets his first big league RBI. For a second there, it looked like it was going to be four double plays. Smoked that ball to the shortstop and out of the reach of Escobar. John Farrell is heading to the mound. He has already made the the call to the bullpen. What's a better matchup? Luis Perez over after two batters, and Sean Camp trots in. So Camp will come in to face Craig Tatum. The bases are still loaded. The Orioles are up by two. Out here in the ninth inning, or as have scored two, Camp making his 30th appearance of the season. Time to stop the bleeding right here. He has come in in this situation before with that good sinking fastball, gotten some double play grounders. It's going to be facing a pinch hitter, Matt Weeders, one of the best in the business this year, hitting with runners in scoring position. This is a golden opportunity for Weeders to pick up some RBIs. He pops this one up on the infield. Infield fly rule. And Weeders goes after the first pitch and pops up to shortstop. So Camp gets the first man of his appearance. Now double play would be just what the doctor ordered. Blue Jays have turned three double plays today. J.J. Hardy's had another good day at the plate. Double in a home run. He has reached base in 22 of his last 23 games, so he is really locked in. Extended his hitting streak to nine games with that bloop double in the third inning. He's had four doubles and a home run in this series. Excuse me, foul ball. It's a ball on the strike. Not exactly where Camp wanted that ball upstairs. I'd love to get a ground ball here, and this is why he's in the situation. Derek Lee's at third, Mark Reynolds at second. And Ryan Adams with his first big league RBI. He's at first. And sign. Hardy just rediscovering his power stroke. Played for Minnesota last year, and they really wanted him to try and hit the ball to right field, use the whole field. That's not his game. His game is to turn on pitches and produce as an offensive shortstop. And it's starting to come true again for Hardy. It sent ball just foul down the third baseline. 
Interesting way he holds the bat. That is well away from his body, and oftentimes you'd think that would create kind of a long, slow swing, but he's gotten everything inside. He does that to force his hands to get some movement back into the hitting position. You hold it out in front of you like that, but you've got to get it back. Create some movement with your hands as the pitch is on its way. And a big strikeout. Camp took something up. Break the ball, had him out in front. Sean Camp comes out of the bullpen and retires the first two he's faced here in the ninth. He's not going to be intimidated by the situation. He's done it before in his career. Good pitch sequence there to get a very hot hitter. A sweeping breaking ball. It's Hardy to swing at it. Nick Markakis, the right fielder. That single extended his hit streak to a seven game streak. A good pitch. Left handers have been a problem for Sean Camp this season. They've hit 348 against him. But he's handled Marcakis very well. Marcakis just two for eight against Camp. Change up he is using against the right handers just haven't had the same effect against the lefties. Mm, pretty good pitch. Don Davidson didn't like it. Camp's one of those pitchers that's better off having a quick at bat. Just a couple pitches, have the ball put in play, and most of the time he's going to win those matchups. Yeah, come right after you. Use that good sinking fastball, sweeping slider, change up. Three and one. The kick has hit a grand slam last week. His third career grand slam. You know what he's sitting on right here, three and one. Something he can do damage with on the inner part of the plate. JP here and CBH on camp discussing their options here. So one thing about camp, he never really has to come in. He can take something off the two seamer, throw the change up, even in a three-one situation. Yeah, take something off the fastball. Because he throws three quarters, he's got good movement on his fastball. Upset the timing a little bit of that hitter. Three and one. You can see Marquette has really had no idea what to expect there. Yep. Ninth inning. Orioles have scored two. Derek Lee at third. Mark Reynolds at second. Ryan Adams at first. John Camp a full count. Two outs. Runners will be off on the pitch. Marquez pokes it into the seats. We haven't seen too many good Nick Marquez swings in this series. It's like he's in between, can't right. decide what he should be hitting. They're not, not picking up the ball. Right. Had three hits in one of the games this series. He's got power to all fields. He's got the ability to drive the ball the other way and pick up and. Hit with runners in scoring position. He's done it his whole career. Now the 3 2 pitch. There go the runners. Marquez hits it to second. Hill dives, knocks it down, gets up, and the Orioles will strand the bases loaded. But the Blue Jays have some work to do. Adam Lind will start things off. He'll be followed by Aaron Hill. Edwin and Carnes show him. Blue Jays down by two as they're set to bat bottom of the ninth against Kevin Gray.
the Philadelphia Phillies. July 1st, the game will start at 107 p.m. Enjoy live entertainment, games, and music outside Rogers Center starting at 10 a.m. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays Canada Day t-shirt. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Canada Day here at Rogers Center. Defensive changes for the Baltimore Orioles. Matt Wieters, who pinch hit last inning, stays into the ball game, and he will go in as the catcher. Robert Andino, a better defender at second base, will take over. Right there, and the closer for the Baltimore Orioles, Kevin Gregg, the ex-Blue Jay, comes in. Here are his numbers, 12 for 16 in save opportunities this year. 19 walks and 23 strikeouts. Got to be able to make him throw the ball over the plate. Run run average good at 3.08. This pitch strike to Adam Lynn. Jason Birkin is the pitcher of record for the Orioles. He had two good innings. He tied all six batters he faced. Boy, he was great. Turned this game around. Kept it right there. Adam Lynn coming into today since his return from the disabled list. 11 games. Check out that average. Over 416 hits. He's made the most of those 16 hits. 14 RBIs. Adam Lynn gets underneath it. Marquez over near the wall. Ball carrying. Home run, Adam Lynn. Number 14. For Lynn, that ball was high and just kept carrying and hit the foul pole about a third of the way up. I just kept watching Nick Markakis, the right fielder, and he knew that that ball was going to be close to going out. It's a high arcing home run from Lynn. The question is, is it going to stay fair or go foul? And it bangs right off the foul pole. One run game. His fifth home run against the Orioles in the last four games. These two hit home runs the other day in the same game, Lyndon Hill, for the first time this year. Does he have a minute again here in the ninth? Outside. 2009. When they were both silver sluggers, they hit six home runs in the same game. They hit home runs in six games. Three times in 2010. Boy, Adam Land is some kind of high. Two for three here. Two for four this afternoon with his 14th homer. By Hill. The Jays have had 18 come from behind wins this season. There's a fly ball to right, but not that deep. Jays will fly to Cincinnati to start the second round of interleague play. Tomorrow it'll be the left-hander Jojo Reyes against Mike Lee. Brandon Morrow takes on Edinson Volquez and Carlos Villanueva against Bronson Arroyo. Three game series in Cincinnati. Balls could be flying out of Great American Ballpark. It's great hitters. Stadium. center field but Jones has got plenty of room and Carnes Young is retired two outs in the night Jays will be right back here on Sportsnet tomorrow night action starts at 6 30 p.m. that'll be the pregame show with Jamie and Greg 3 30 p.m. Pacific time on Sportsnet East Ontario West and Pacific first of three against the Reds J. Pierre and Sevilla with his first hit back.
Jose Molina was ejected after an at bat in the seventh. Way outside. Kevin Gray will show you a little bit of everything. He can sink the fastball. He can cut it. He'll mix in a breaking ball every now and then. Right-handers, he likes to stay away from. Use that fastball and that cutter away. Ground ball to short. Hardy across the diamond. The Orioles win it, and they snap their long losing streak. Their first win in 17 tries here at Rogers Center. But Showalter's team wins the series finale. J.J. Hardy had a great series with the bat. Kevin Gregg picks up the save. And the Blue Jays will move on to Cincinnati. They win this series two games to one. They lose this one 4-3. Now here's Jamie Campbell.